Here's a close-up comparison between the iPhone 14 Pro screen I refurbished at home and the original display that came with the phone, which is seen in the most recent video showing you the safest way to open all newer iPhones. Both are Apple original displays, so of course, unlike aftermarket replacements, the quality of the display is the same, whether it be power consumption, resolution, response rate, or viewing angle. When it comes to how they look on the outside, there isn't anything that stands out other than the signature of the seller on eBay and a fingerprint smudge made on the back, which I feel could have been easily avoided. It's not a whole lot and it's not showing too well in the shot but thanks to this lip around the bezel which had to be there to accommodate for the thickness of the film based adhesive used from the factory you can more or less simply leave it on a level surface and in time the glue will fill all the way to the end with minimal seepage achieving perfect factory spec spreading of our liquid glue. Alternatively, you can leave it slightly propped up on one side and apply heat to help the glue fill one side over the other to speed things up. Also, because the bezel is the exact same shape and size of the front glass, you don't have to worry about misalignment. As long as they sit flush, your display will be good. There's absolutely no need for an alignment mold in this case. Ultimately, a lot of what makes the iPhone 12 to 14 series more DIY friendly than other phones lies with the bezel. I have a feeling that they just might change the bezel design with their new release. Phone manufacturers have a tendency to make repairs more difficult as time goes on. Kind of like how Samsung started gluing their front camera for no apparent reason. On Samsung phones, the display typically stays on the phone during the process unlike Apple or Pixel phones so you had to remove the back to remove the front camera prior to gluing so the front camera being glued just made it more cumbersome to remove. Keyword is had to because we finally finished developing the camera hole cover film which allows you to glue the front glass on all Samsung phones without removing the back glass. This film adheres to the screen sealing the hole. I'll go more in depth about this in another video. All of this may sound very encouraging and in a way it is but I do want to remind you that it is more difficult than it looks. Maybe you can relate to the time you try to complicate a recipe, fixing a rust spot on a car, or making your own furniture, and in the middle you went, geez, this is a lot more work than I thought. It can very well be something like that. If you don't follow all the steps outlined carefully, you can very well damage the display permanently. You just might end up hating it. In the end though, the harder the task, the more rewarding it is when it's done. It's a learning experience either way. In this particular case, there's an additional sense of reward in not getting the unknown parts error message, which you will get even if you were to replace the screen with another genuine Apple display. These soft, flexible OLEDs with the non-electronic polarizer layer laminated on top of the display, which are found on all iPhones from iPhone 12 to 14 series are by far the most forgiving compared to all other smartphones. When it comes to glass only replacement at least anyways. This might be super obvious to many of you, but remember that to minimize the effort and frustration, keep the display heated to keep the glue layers so as soft as possible. It really helps to have a helper keep the display heated, clean the work surface as well as the screen so the gel pet sticks well, and change the angle of the wire often so it minimizes the strains. Sometimes the wire just gets stuck on an edge of a broken piece of glass that requires a slightly different angle approach but it helps to change the angle of the wire regardless so the wire only works through one side of the bezel adhesive at a time and not slice through as much oka at once. The adhesive on the bezel of the screen is harder than oka. Though for those who are not familiar oka refers to optically clear adhesive which is again the film based adhesive that was used from the factory and this is also what some of the other pros use but this method requires special equipment such as a laminator which is kind of like a press in a heated negative pressure chamber as well as a bubble remover which uses positive pressure to remove bubbles. Anyways I'm getting a bit off topic here. I'll cover more of these in the full length how-to video so subscribe to be the first to know. Thank you for watching and as always if you have any questions please feel free to comment.